Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the fourth week of Advent, but this is also within the uh, the days of the O Antiphons. And today, the uh, O Antiphon is O Rex Gentium, O King of the Nations. And so in the evening prayer for the day, you'll find that as a part of the antiphon as well as in the masses for the antiphon of the day. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months, then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we are getting very, very close to uh, uh, the celebration of the solemnity of the nativity of our Lord, Christmas. And today, again, we're uh, in the fourth week of Advent on uh, the Thursday of that week. But uh, with the O Antiphons, there's only one left, and that is for tomorrow. So today, when we think of... uh, preparation uh, during this time of Advent, preparation for the coming of the Christ child. One of the most beautiful places we could meditate is as we found today in the Magnificat, the Canticle of Mary. And there are so many wonderful things that are found in this song of Mary, uh, a song that is used as a part of evening prayer every evening for those who celebrate the Liturgy of the Hours. And it is the response that Mary has to the words of Elizabeth, who, filled with the Holy Spirit, says to her, Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And at that point, Mary uh, Mary began her song, her canticle, that uh, we have used throughout the centuries of the church as a beautiful song of praise to our God for the rich gift of the incarnation that came through the Blessed Virgin. And how wonderful it is when we think of the the words, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Another translation, my soul magnifies the Lord. In other words, my soul wants to make large who the Lord is. My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul wants to explode in front of everybody the wondrous gift that God is to us and for us. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The very core of my being rejoices in what God is doing and what he has done in this lowly servant, speaking of herself. And one of the things that's interesting about this is the next phrase, From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. One of the interesting things is is that in that uh, particular passage in the original language, in the Greek, when it says, all generations will call me blessed, it isn't a word that we would use, eulogeo, which means to praise that person for who they are. In other words, uh, she is not saying... Every generation is going to say, I'm the greatest thing that ever was. But it's a word specifically that means uh, one who has found the fullness of joy. 
It's the word makarios, the same word that is used in uh, Matthew's gospel for the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the same word there. Oh, the bliss, oh, the joy of the one who is poor in spirit. And here, all generations will call me blessed. All generations will recognize the fact that my blessedness comes from an inner joy in the hope and the heart of God. And so that is something that we really uh, need to put into our hearts in a powerful way that we can, again, recognize the fact that Mary does not, does not want to call our attention to herself, but what God is doing in her. The Almighty has done great things for me, she says, and holy is his name. As much as we venerate uh, the Blessed Virgin for being the mother of God, uh, there is nothing uh, in her that wants to do anything but call attention to her God. She recognizes that she has been blessed among all people, especially among all women, as the one who has been given this amazing gift, amazing grace of carrying in her womb the Son of God. And what's wonderful is that, that she goes on here to just talk about the fact of what God has done throughout the ages, that he's dispersed the arrogant of heart. He scattered the proud, she says. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones. He's lifted up the lowly. Throughout history, we have seen how he has done this. He has filled the hungry with good things. The rich he sent away empty. So in other words, again, the disposition of the heart was all that God really desires from us, that we would be hungry and then he would fill us. That if we think we have rich in everything we need, then we're sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, and he's remembered his promise of mercy. And so how wonderful it is for us to remember the fact that God follows through on his covenantal promises, that the promise that he made for salvation is one that would finally and fully be completed on Christmas Day as the virgin gives birth to a child the incarnate Son of God. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as always, we give thanks to the Lord for this wonderful, wonderful time together. And as we continue the last couple of days coming up to Christmas, we just uh, wish you all a blessed Advent and a Merry Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.